Hey guys, Sean here, VisibleDark.ca. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to look at the vignetting issue. Specifically, I'm bringing this up because I'm using the Apex ED Reducer Flattener. And it is introducing vignetting into my uh, optical train. Now, the vignetting issue is caused by an obstruction in the optical train and uh, whether you want to call it vignetting or light fall off the outside perimeter edges of your image are going to appear dark and then you've got a uh, brighter center to the image now with regards to the apex ed i've heard from some people that they were disappointed with the vignetting but i mean for me, I was expecting vignetting. My image circle with the Esprit 100 is 40 millimeters, and I'm reducing this down to about 27 millimeters using the uh, Apex ED. So inevitably, we're going to get vignetting. Is this a big problem though? Is it a problem with any setup? The answer to that is really no, it is not. Vignetting can be taken care of by using proper flats and in combination with post-processing of your image using something like Pixinsight's dynamic background extraction. I'm going to show you the differences here so that we understand that this problem is not a problem and it's certainly not an issue with regards to the Apex ED. The point is that I want to make is that the vignetting can be solved so what we're looking at here is an image that isn't calibrated so i haven't applied flats to it flats are going to take care of the vignetting issue for us proper flats if you don't take proper flats then the vignetting issue will still exist most likely in your image so you need to flats are sometimes tricky and you have to get them right but if you get them right they work fabulously and they're magical they can remove not only the vignetting in the image but they can remove the uh, dust bunnies um, any anything that is in the optical train that you don't want appearing in the image dust motes that can all be removed using flats so it can correct for a lot of things but they have to be done properly and if they're not done properly then you're not going to eliminate these issues that exist within the the image so what we're looking at here is an, an image that isn't calibrated yet i haven't applied flats and we can clearly see the vignetting occurring and now there's actually even and i don't know if it's really that visible on the uh, in the video as you're watching it but there's even um, a dust moat that exists here as well now we are able to apply the flat. This is the flat that I took. I'll just show you the flat. This is the flat image. So it's not only uh, capturing the vignetting that is occurring in the optical train, but it's also catching the uh, dust that's on it within the optical train uh, somewhere, whether it's on the sensor or it's on the reducer or it's on the, 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 the lens itself of the refractor. Here's that dust mode that I was talking about there just a speck of dust, but all this can be taken care of, can be removed. And if I zoom out a bit here, you get more of a, a feel for the vignetting that's occurring. Now, let's just put these away for now. So we've got our image that wasn't calibrated, we've got our flat, and we're gonna apply the flat to the image so that we can end up with a calibrated image, which is this one here. And the vignetting, has been almost all of it has been removed from the image you can clearly see that if we do a side-by-side -side comparison here so we've got i should actually do it this way so that we get a before and after feel for things going on so if we look at this image here i'll just try and make it the same one to nine so this is the not calibrated and we've got the vignetting occurring we can clearly see that. And this is the calibrated where I applied this flat image to it. Well, I applied a bunch of flats, but the flat has the flats have been applied to the image, and we clearly see that the vignetting is now removed. So if I take this a step further, 
I can actually do some dynamic background extraction on it. And the dynamic background extraction can further remove vignetting. And you're probably going to ask me, how does it remove vignetting? What, what, what am I doing to remove the specifically the vignetting? And I'm going to show you that. So let me just, uh, because what I ended up with just quickly was this is a drizzled. I drizzled this as well. It's still a fair comparison because what the dynamic background extraction has done is still exists within the, the drizzle image, but it's cleaned up any remaining vignetting that's occurring and it's also removed any gradients that exist in the image. So we've now got, we've gone from, we've gone from that to this. The vignetting is not an issue. I, I just don't see the argument for vignetting. Um, so what I did was if we come back to the calibrated image here and we just uh, quickly load up the process icons, we'll just do that. Okay. So we've got our process icons loaded and we're going to do dynamic background extraction on this image and we're going to remove the vignetting first. Any residual vignetting that hasn't been taken care of by the flats is going to be removed by the dynamic background extraction. I'm going to show you just how simple this is. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the sample radius of these sample points. And because I want to, I want to sample more background than stars. That's the uh, the idea behind increasing the uh, the sample radius. And for this particular image here, there's different approaches to dynamic background extraction. Uh, whatever works best for you is the best way to do it. For me, in my experience, um, I have found that in the situations where you have a lot of nebulosity throughout the image from all from side to side, up and down. Uh, the best way to remove the nebulosity is to just leave an outer parameter of sample points. Don't worry about the middle being filled in because you are you really don't want to be sampling the nebulosity as, as you know, you want to avoid doing that as much as possible. So the next thing that I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to the target image correction. I'm going to select division. Division is what is going to remove any vignetting that exists in the image still. So we're going to do division. We're going to discard the background model, replace the target image. And I'll just make a duplicate of this because I'm going to reuse it again. I'm going to apply it. And you can clearly see that any remaining vignetting was removed from the image. I'm going to take it a step further and move any gradients that exist in the image still. So I'm going to use subtraction and I'm going to apply that to the image. I guess I'll just use the check mark and there you go. So now it's done. So if we look at this side by side as a fair comparison, this is the after and this is the before. So we've got I just want to see if I can get this uh, reduced a little bit here. I'll just do that. I just want to show you. I like zooming out because you can really see the vignetting a lot easier when you're zoomed out. So here we have the original uncalibrated, no flats or no dynamic background extraction applied. We can clearly see the vignetting that's occurring. And here we have a calibrated image where the flats have been applied and dynamic background extraction has been applied to it. We can clearly see that the, uh, the vignetting has been removed. The light fall off vignetting um, has been removed from the image and it does not pose a problem and it is not an issue to deal with. It's not an issue in any telescope setup whether you or whether or not you're using the apex ed reducer flattener or not if you have vignetting occurring in your images you can remove it completely with flats and dynamic background extraction okay so i'm really liking the starzona apex ed reducer flattener it's been working out great for me so far and as i've just demonstrated the vignetting is not a problem okay so that's it for this video thanks very much for tuning in appreciate it Please uh, like the video if it was helpful and uh, don't forget to comment, leave some comments for me, let me know uh, what you think. 
and uh, we'll see you again in another video. Take care, everyone. Clear skies.